Bosk has two to four players planting trees and spreading fallen leaves to entertain park goers. Floodgate Games provided this in exchange for an honest review. Set the board out depending on player count. Big squares are for the two player game. Each player takes all components in their color choice, then places one wooden leaf token near the score track. Keep the wind track and marker close, but you won't need them yet. In spring, everyone takes turns placing trees on the intersections. You cannot place a tree on the edge, and trees cannot be moved. Once all trees have been placed, move to summer. Award points to the player who has the most valuable tree slash trees in each row and column. There's a chart in the rulebook to help with this. In full, everyone spreads leaves based on the direction and value of the wind board. For example, you'll first spread leaves from a 1 tree, then a 2, 3, and 4 tree. There are no restrictions on your last 4 trees. To spread leaves, choose a leaf tile, then make a trail of leaf tokens of that length from the base of your tree. Each leaf tile can only be used once. The player who played the lowest value leaf tile is the first player in the next round. There is one special leaf tile though. The squirrel must be placed within three spaces of their tree and basically locks a space for you so that nobody else can place leaves on that space. Once all leaves have been placed, move to winter. Go through each terrain, the colored areas, and award points to the players with the most leaves. There's a chart in the rulebook to help with this. Place trees to score, spread leaves to score again. That's Bosk. Boss takes around 10 minutes per player, plus 5 or 6 minutes for setup and takedown. This is really good for weeknights. If your coffee table can support a standard chessboard, it can support this. Even though there's also the wind board, you can pretty much play out of your insert and a baggie. You have to be able to plan, as best as you can, a few rounds in advance. There's no reading, and it's grade 1 math. Could younger kids just place randomly? Sure. Could you just play spring and summer until kids are ready for the next step? Absolutely. Clumsy people need to watch out though. I'll talk about this more later. In our fourth game of Bosque, Mom had a tiny lead after summer scoring. Naturally, our, okay, my first instinct was to block her. She controlled a few terrains, but because Grandma kept playing the low sleep, she remained player one. Because turn order was grandma, me, dad, then mom, mom could undo my work. Me and dad used our squirrels in consecutive rounds to go first and spread out tons of leaves, forcing mom to decide if she should abandon terrain or spend points to go on top of our piles. Of course we weren't, okay, dad wasn't, just trying to mess with mom. That was just the icing. In the end, mom finished ahead of dad and I finished ahead of her. Nobody could stop Grandma, who was clever at the start and vicious at the end. Good job, Grandma! Bosk is quicker than we expected, and you get a surprisingly thinky abstract with different modes because of the scoring system. Do you try to dominate summer scoring and hold on in the winter? Do you spread yourself in a way to really pile on the endgame points? Leaf placement is so clever. Do you choose a high number early to force people to choose whether to cover you or not? Or do you save them to cover up other people's leaves? Do you go low to try and go first every round? When do you use the squirrel? Don't forget the wind direction. There is next to no downtime unless players have analysis paralysis. AP is when people freeze when they need to make decisions. Spring is worse early on because you have an empty board. As spots are taken, your options narrow, meaning it gets easier. Fall is worse later because you need to manage your leaves and keep track of who has majority in each terrain. Like Raptor, an incredible two-player game I reviewed in June 2017, this is a thematic abstract. It's a bit of a puzzle to decide where to place things and to predict opponents and to maximize your turns. At the same time, you get the feeling of things growing and filling out, then falling and spreading later on. Thicker wood would have really helped in making it easier to pick up those leaves. They can slip out of your hand easily when placing, which can cause total chaos depending on the game state. Not only that, but don't be surprised if a handful are broken before your first game, and more break the more times it hits the table. 
Speaking of chaos, the trees don't stand perfectly. When the board is full, it doesn't take much for a sleeve or bump messing things up. People with large hands or hand issues might really struggle. The grid lines can be hard to see because of the color choices. I wish there is more of a difference between the light and dark water, and why did they choose such similar shades of orange and red? Sure, the shape is different, but they can be mixed up on a packed board, especially since there are orange and reddish terrains. Bosk is a thematic abstract for multiple players with an accessible and attractive theme, and it has incredible table presence. Unfortunately, the beautiful look hurts the actual gameplay. I played this more often if you replaced the leaves with cubes and marked up the board to make lines and terrains easier to tell apart. Honestly, in terms of gameplay, a homemade version of this would be better than the finished version. It's too bad about the production because all four of us really like the game.